It's the Last Stand Podcast. And here's your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is the Last Stand. We bring you the biggest names in sports, entertainment, the unfiltered straight talk. I am Brian Custer. And joining us today, our guest comes from the sport of boxing. And when you talk about boxing, the 154-pound division, without question, one of the deepest and best in the sport. And Erickson, the hammer, Lubin, is one of the top fighters at 154. He joins us. Hammer, welcome to The Last Stand. What's going on, Brian? How you doing? Great to have you on, my friend. Listen, you're, you're, you're coming off. Uh, a fight, an important fight, and a victory over Terrell Gachet. You are now the number one contender when you talk about the WBC world title. And so you will have to face the winner of either Jamel Charlo, Jason Rosario, but you got a, a really good victory over Terrell Gachet. Let's start there because what was your game plan when you went into that fight? And, and, and tell us, what did you think about your performance? Uh, like I said before, I ain't really watched the tape yet, but I gave myself like a, a B minus. I feel like Terrell Gachet was tougher than I thought. You know, um, he 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 definitely he definitely um has some. He he he's been here before. You know, he, he's fought champions like Laura and Austin Trout. So you know, he he's been here before. He's seen he's seen styles like myself, and um, you know, he brought a tough game plan. But um, I was able to overcome because I felt like you know I was just. Like I said, I was just a couple steps ahead of him um, before the fight even started. I felt like I was uh, steps ahead of him, and I brought it in with me. You feel me? I I, I was able to dictate the pace. You know, I didn't I didn't fight at, at, at his slow pace, and you know, um, landed a few big shots. But he was definitely uh, a tough customer. He, he's at the what, top of the division for a reason. Yeah. What was the game plan? What was the game plan going into that fight? Game plan was just just be um, use a lot of counters and um. Use my jab, um, set set up big shots by using my jab. That's that's what we was working on in the gym. I feel like that was mo most of my ga uh, game plan. And it's I just funny. had to adapt while I was in the ring. Yeah, you know, uh, there was funny because there was so much response and social media to the fight, and people were saying, "Hey, they felt like the fight was boring, so to speak, until the eighth round." And it seems that's when you guys really started uh, to mix it up. So. Why, I guess, were you guys cautious, I would say, uh, for those first seven rounds? I mean, it was just a, it was a chess match. It was just more like a chess match. Then one of, um, you know, we was both trying to counter each other. You know, he had some good counters. I had some good counters. And, you know, um, he's an Olympian. You know, we're we from the same pedigree. And, and it was more like a, it was more like more of a boxing match. We wouldn't call it, you know, too much of a boring fight. It was more just a boxing match, more like a chess match. How different was it fighting with no fans? It was a little bit different, but, you know, it wasn't too different because I still had, you know, an opponent in front of my face trying to, you know, knock my head off. <laughs> so it was just, you know, being in the it – was, it was sort of like uh, an intense sparring match a little bit. Um, you've now won five straight fights since suffering your only defeat uh, of your career. How different of a fighter – is Erickson Lubin since that defeat in and out of the ring? Uh, way, way, way different fighter, man. Way different fighter. I feel like I picked up on a lot of stuff. Um, since my, my loan loss, I feel like I picked up a lot. Um, I moved out here at West Palm to, you know, uh, get with Kevin Cunningham. He's, 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 definitely, he's definitely great with southpaws, man. Hands-on trainer. I feel like I understand the game better. And what about in the ring? In the ring, you just, you know, just use my softball abilities, you know, uh, you know, to have the advantage. I feel like I'm just, you know, more tuned in as a, as a, as an experienced fighter. I'm more of an experienced fighter. And, you know, I just, you know, I, I use my softball uh, advantage. And you talked about joining up with Kevin Cunningham and you guys have had about four fights together now. Um, talk to me about why you made the switch. You know, did someone recommend Kevin to you? What, what made you make the switch 
to Kevin Cunningham? I mean, I, I knew Kevin. I knew about Kevin, and I knew Kevin. I seen Kevin on, you know, uh, on TV working with Corey Spricks and him. I, I've been new Kevin for a, a while now, so I just know he's great with Southpaws. You know, look what he done with Devin Alexander and Corey Spinks, and you know he. I, I just knew I knew about him, and I felt like you know he, that was my best uh, my best fit, and it has been. What do you think um, now? Uh, because you are the mandatory for Charlo, for the Rosario winner, and of course their big unification fight. Who do you think is going to win that fight, and why? I feel, I feel like Charlo has the advantage. Uh, I feel like I feel like uh, Charlo has the advantage. Um, he, he's he's more of a more of a more of a boxer, if you if you would say. Um, Rosario is a big puncher, though. You you, just, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for the first couple rounds. I'm gonna see how they come out. I know it's gonna be a it's gonna be a shootout, so I, I'm tuned in on that. You know, I, I think Charlo just has the advantage. I feel like he um, has better uh, footwork, and I feel like um, any experience. So I feel like that. Got to catch up with Rosario maybe in the later rounds. We'll see how he comes out though. You know he took advantage of a J Rock. Well, see if that uh, that might happen too. We'll see what happens. Considering you are the the mandatory for the winner, I'm sure you got a preference. Who do you prefer? But Charlo, I want my rematch. I want my rematch, man. I want my rematch. I feel like I rise to the occasion. Um, you know, I, I, I rated myself a B-minus maybe because of the layoff, but, you know, I'm always rise to the occasion. I feel like, you know, a rematch is definitely um, something I want. And we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday. I'm excited for that. So let's go the, let's go the other route. What, what do you think an Erickson Lubin, Jason Rosario fight would look like? Um, that, that's another one. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sleeping on, on, on banana. Um, uh, I know, I know he's a big puncher, and I know he he hungry. He wanna he wanna win. He wanna you know be at the top of this division like I wanna be. It'll it'll be a good match too. I feel like I come out on top on that too. <laughs> you know, we always ask fighters who who come on the show. We ask them this question, and Hammer, put management aside, put the PBC, Al Heyman, all those guys aside. If it was up to you, and the Hammer could pick. Let's say his next three fights. Who would be your opponents? Well, I mean, you know, with the 54 being mixy, you know, everybody getting belts and, and losing the belts and, you know, all that. But, I mean, I want the titles. I want to see who wins between Charlo, Charlo and um, Rosario. That's something I'm excited for. Um, either or, either one of those fighters, you know, as one of them, of course, and the other two is just we 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 we'll see uh someone like I don't know, maybe uh I don't know man it, it, it's so it's so so mixy in this weight class it don't matter to me man it really don't matter to me yeah because I would I would think like a Jared Hurt uh I mean you know what whether it's Harrison whether it's uh, all of these, we, top we, top we top. can make those fights. We can make those fights. Jared Hurd, um, J. Rock, Williams, Tony Harrison. It doesn't matter to me. Any one of those guys. What sets you apart? You think from the rest of the top guys at 154 pounds? I mean, I'm the youngest. I'm, that definitely sets me apart. Uh, I'm the youngest. I feel like I'm I'm the fastest in the weight class. I feel like I'm. I'm one of the I'm one of the strong guys in the weight class as well. I could I could I could easily I, and I box the best. I feel like Southpaw. I could box and I could bang. I could do both. I feel like those guys they you know they they're, they're kind of one dimensional fighters. I mentioned I it at the up. I mentioned it at the top of the show, but I'd like to get your your opinions on it. Give me your opinions of the 154 pound division in boxing, and in your opinion, where does it rank? Best in boxing. Best in boxing. Best in boxing. Tell me why. It's a Tell competitive weight, competitive weight class, um, and, and we all fighting each other. Terrell Gushay was at the top of this weight class. We fought each other. That was the fight that they wanted to see happen, and we made it happen. Like, it's how, exciting. How many more fights do you think you have, Hammer, in yourself at 154? 
Nah, I made I made weight so easy, man. I feel like you know, um, you know, my weight cut's great. I feel like I, I got I got a couple more years in this weight class. I want I want to be on top of this weight class first before I leave 54. I want to I want to be I want the fans to be like, yeah, he he was the best at 154 pounds when it's all said and done. And that leads that leads into my next question: Your goals. When it is all said and done, what is Erickson Lubin's goals in this sport? I want to I want to be a legend. I want to be a legend in this sport. I want everybody to talk about me, you know, past my days. I want everybody to be like, yeah, that was one of the best southpaws of boxing. Um, when you were, let's say, growing up, uh, tell me the fighters had the biggest influence on you. Say it again. Biggest influence on you. Growing up, who were the fighters who had the biggest influence on you? Mayweather, Mayweather was definitely, you know, I feel like Mayweather's TV, like you say he is. Um, Mayweather's definitely a big influence. And the ones I had around me in the gym, like my older brother, um, uh, Pernell Whitaker for sure, Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard. Those are all my, my favorite fighters of all time. I, 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 look, I look more into just, just their boxing, you know. I look, I look on how they, how, they, how they live and how they train. So... Those are my definitely my favorite fighters, but Mayweather for sure. Mayweather. Um, we talk. About, let's talk a little bit about your career because, as an amateur, phenomenal amateur career you had, uh, Erickson. One hundred and forty-three and seven as an amateur. You won the twenty thirteen National Golden Gloves. You were basically a lock to make the twenty sixteen Olympic team, and you were considered uh, one of the USA's best hopes to even medal uh, there in Rio in 2016, but you opted to turn professional instead, and you're basically a team. Tell us why. Um, like, like, like I said before, man, I feel like the boxing, boxing rules just changed, and the amateurs was just different for me. It just, it just turned out to be different with the headgears and stuff like that. So I just decided why not get paid for it, you know? I know I, know I was one of the top guys, but, you know, just – I felt like I could I could be a champion at an early age. That's why I, I, I turned pro. And so you turned pro. Uh, you then signed with, which is of course now defunct, that the Mike Tyson Promotions. Uh, what 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 was that like? Because I even remember, I think it was USA Boxing even rebuked him for yeah. <laughs> for taking you and making you go pro. They were like, no, this is this kid could win us a medal. Uh, so what was that like when you signed with Mike Tyson Promotions? I mean, it, it was different. You know, a lot of publicity because of that. Um, I, f I feel I feel like you know Mike 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 was able to help because you know Mike he had a big buzz at an early age, so he he was able to help me out and like you know teach me, you know, the ins and outs of boxing. You know, just being around him, I, I learned a lot. Um, it, it, I gotta ask you. What do you think about Roy Jones Jr. and Mike Tyson fighting? <laughs> That's crazy, man. It's, I'm excited for it, man. I'm excited for them two to be fighting. Roy ain't fight too long ago. Roy, Roy fought in, like, 2018 or something. And, and, and Mike Tyson, I want to see how he come back. You know, Mike, he always got that beast in him. <laughs> so, uh, you, were, you, were the, uh, you were the ESPN prospect of the year. Um. And listen, I think you were only a pro maybe three and a half years. Uh, you had 18 fights before you challenged Jermel Charlo uh, for the world title there in Brooklyn. Uh, when you look back on it, do you think your old management moved you too soon? Um, I, feel, I feel like I was, I was a little bit, just a little bit. I don't feel like they... Um they did a bad job with me at all. You know, they got me the fights that I needed under my belt. But I feel like, you know, um, a fight with Charlo could have been could have been built up more. I could have had some fights like I'm getting now, you know, with being Terrell Gachet, you know, the top dogs. Being the first one to stop Ishe Smith, Gallimore, who's always tough. Um, and, and definitely a Terrell Gachet fight. That's that's something I needed on my belt. You know, it's great. It's a great experience. It's, it's, it's a fight that, you know, um, you know, it's good for the division and good for myself. It was a good win. So I feel like, you know, that's definitely a fight I need before a, a big fight with Charlo. But, you know, we had it. We, 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 we right back where we was at in 2017. 
we're right back at the mandatory spot. We sitting at number one and being the mandatory. So now, now I want to see who wins next week so we can catch the autumn titles. And, and so take me back then to October of 2017. You're fighting uh, Charlo for the title. You were just 21. I mean, let's be honest, you were a baby uh, then. Uh, I, I remember interviewing you uh, before the fight. Um, very confident young man. When you look back, what was the game plan? What was the game plan against uh, Jamel Charlo then? I mean, we knew he was going to be shooting early. I know we, we knew he was going to be shooting the big shots early. So uh, we was just, you know, we was just playing in the box and just fill him out, you know. But I felt like, you know, I kind of, I kind of just, you know, sat in front of him too long during that time. I just, you know, I, I was posing. You know, boxing trainers and my trainers, you know, they always told told me not to, you know, be sitting there and posing. I, I never do it again. And um, you know, I, I'm just a total different fighter from that time. But you know, game plan was to really box. But you know, he caught me clean and early. So we 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 back at we 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 right back where we want to be though. It's, it'll be a whole different fight. I'm way more experienced. And, and when you look back, when you look back on that fight, did he catch you coming in just trying to be aggressive, or were you trying to dodge something? When you look back at the tape, what was happening? It was just, it was, it was just a bad habit. It was just a bad habit of you know, dipping out, dipping out the wrong way. And I had my hands down pretty much, and he was, he was able to land. I feel like he was more shooting to the body. I thought, I thought he was shooting the uppercut to the body or something. And you know, I kind of dipped into the shot. But, you know, it, it, it's just a minor mistake. Minor mistake that, you know, you learn with experience. Glad I was able to get the experience. And it, it, it taught me more inside and outside the ring, like how I should be, you know, as, as, a, as a professional. And, and, and because you, you, I remember talking with you, interviewing you before that fight, and you did, you seemed really, really confident. How confident were you? I mean, because you yeah. were young. How confident were you? Was that just talk? Uh, how nah, confident were you and, going and, into and that? And it never just talk, man. It <laughs> never just talk, man. I, I, I was definitely, I was confident, man. I feel like my, my, my skill, my skill better is just better than his. You know, he just, the only, I feel like the only department he really had me on was just being, being experienced. You know, the experience he had, you know, 30 fights or close to 30 fights during that time. And I feel like that was his only advantage. But I went in there definitely confident. I'm confident now too, man. I I, I believe in myself. I believe and, I'm, and, I'm always rise to the occasion. I'm always rise to the occasion. And, and so, so tell us then specifically, why would, why is Lubin Charlo going to be different the second time around? Because he will say, I'm stronger. I'm older i'm in my man strength he's still relatively young uh i still have the experience so why would it be different it'd be different because the same thing i'm 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 with i'm with, I'm with kevin i'm with kevin cunningham i still got the same team i'm a i'm a, I'm a southpaw too i'm growing too i'm 25 years old and i'm, I'm stronger i'm wiser i'm smarter so it, it'd be one of those fights it'd be one of those fights it'd be you know we both, we both, if, if we both leveled up, then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to put it to the test. You know, you have, when you talk about what's going on around us in the world, you've got the NBA, their players, the league obviously is very socially active, the NFL, the players, and now the league is coming around there. What about boxers? Uh, do you think uh, boxers need to be uh, more vocal, using their platform, speaking out, uh, for social justice and uh, racial equality. I mean, it's a sensitive subject right now, but you know, yeah, I, I, I kind of do feel like we should, you know, be talking about that. That's important, you know, you know, being being like with, with all this racial injustice going on and, and po police brutality. I feel like you know, guys should speak up on that a little bit more. You know, it's unfair, and and, and me as a black man, you know, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta voice that. Um, let, let's talk too about the fight game. It, pound for pound, right now, Hammer. When you look around the landscape of boxing, pound for pound, who would you say is the best fighter in the world right now? Best fighter in the world. To me, right now, you know, um, Terence Crawford, Errol Spence, those guys. They definitely, they definitely at the top. 
as as pound for pound to me. Ter- I, I want to see that fight happen. A, a winner between Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence will definitely solidify who's the best in boxing. Well, Lomachenko too, though. Lomachenko, the Tiafimo fight, I'm excited for that. Those those guys right now, to me, at, are at the top. And then, you know, you got legends like Manny Pacquiao, who who, who surprises us every time he comes out. You know, it's, it's always exciting to watch Manny Pacquiao fight. You know, I, I want to see guys like that fight each other. And, and so Canelo as ex- Alvarez, the store. Canelo yeah. Alvarez, the store too. As exciting as you are, who is the one fighter that Erickson Lubin always enjoys watching fight? Um, definitely guys like Canelo Alvarez. I, I, I'm always excited to see Canelo Alvarez fight. I think he's at the at the top right now. It's always exciting to see him fight. Terrence Crawford too. Um, Devonte Devonte Davis is exciting. Uh, Lomachenko exciting. Those those are the guys I, I really enjoy watching. Um, Eric and Lubin, uh, people who come on the show, we always let uh, the viewers and people who watch the show ask questions we got some questions for you obviously through social media so let's start through twitter uh this first question asks uh what will be your mental approach in a charlo rematch just being hungry hungry make sure i'm 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 staying steps ahead of him always gonna be confident because that's just me i'm 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 a confident fighter and I feel like I bring that into the ring, and I, I feed off that energy. Being confident, being uh, that—that's how I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like that. Next one comes from uh, Twitter as well. Hammer. It says, "How can you handle Charlo or Rosario's power when you got wobbled by Gouche, who doesn't who doesn't possess a lot of power?" It, it was. It was. It, it was. A, it was. A, it was a good shot that he landed, but it ain't. It ain't really. It ain't really phased me like that. You know, it was just a, it was a shot that landed. Um, I won't get hit with that shot. I won't get hit with that shot. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm in the gym. I'm, I'm, I'm always, always perfecting my craft. So a shot like that won't even, won't even harm me. Mm-hmm. And then being in the bubble a little bit, um, not, not blaming anything on the bubble. It's just, it's a, it's a little different for me. It's a little different. I, I feel like I was just, you know, a little bit lax and days ago in the bubble a little bit, but you know, a, a fight, a fight with a uh, fight with one of those guys. I just make sure a shot don't like that don't land. Uh, this next one comes from Facebook, and they ask, "Does taking or uh, not fighting in front of fans does that take away from the atmosphere and the energy of a fighter?" So I guess he's asking, when you when you got in the ring with Gachet, because there was any wasn't any fans, did, was there a lack of energy to you? Um. Just in the atmosphere, a little bit, a little bit. It was just, it was, it was like I said, it was like an intense bar match. Like it wasn't as electrifying. I really do miss the fans, though. We need the fans in there. All right, Hammer. We've come to the last segment of this show. We call it the last stand. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions, Hammer. I want the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? All right, go ahead. Here we go. Give me the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the name Jermel Charlo. Revenge. All right. You call that left hand sledge, the right one jack. Yeah. Which one's more powerful? They both powerful. I, I can't tell. I'll be, you know, I, I heard guys with both hands. Uh, who is the best fighter? At 154 pounds, not named Erickson Lubin. You gotta give it the uh you gotta give it to Charlo. You gotta give it to Charlo. We set in that rematch up, right? Who is the one fighter you dislike the most? I mean these boys, these boys ain't, you know, they ain't do nothing for me to dislike them, but like I said, I just want to rematch with Charlo. It ain't, it ain't no hate. It ain't none of that. It's just, you know, I, I want my get back. By this time next year, Erickson Lubin will be, you finish the sentence. Unified champion. I like it. 
I like he's it. Five champion. He's he's known as the hammer. He's always been confident and without a without a doubt, uh, one of the best at 154 pounds. Hammer, I appreciate the time, my friend. Best of luck to you, and certainly look forward to seeing you in that world title fight in your future. Sure. Thank you, Brian. Absolutely. That's what we do here on The Last Day. We bring you biggest names in sports, just like Erickson Lubin. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.